Hello and welcome to Psyched, the show where we explore psychedelics through social, economic, and political perspectives. And next up, we have Mike Zappelin. Uh, People affectionately call him Zappy. Psychedelic activism is his topic, uh, but this is uh, a man who uh, has been in a lot of different places. I have gotten to know him a little bit through the virtual world. What his bio describes him as is that uh, Playboy magazine has titled him as uh, the man who wants to change the world with psychedelics. Uh, He won the Amsterdam Film Festival's Van Gogh Award for documentary directing on his film, The Reality of Truth, which focuses on the importance of going inside one's own mind for answers and healing. The film features actress Michelle Rodriguez, Deepak Chopra, Ram Dass, Dr. Drew, Marianne Williamson, and Joel Osteen. His latest film, Lamar Odom, Reborn, documents the psychedelic intervention Zappi gave to Lamar over the last two years using the breakthrough treatments of ketamine and ibogaine. Zappi is also the visionary behind such internet brands as music.com, beer.com, computer.com, creditcards.com, diamond.com, and silver.com. A regular guest of the media, Zappi is the creator of the Harvard Business School elective eBusiness and recently moderated a first of its kind panel at the Milken uh, Global Conference titled Highs and Lows of the Cannabis Economy. Zappi co-founded with Warren Gumpel the Ketamine Fund 501c3, which provides free ketamine treatments to veterans suffering from PTSD or having suicidal ideations with the mission of lowering suicide rates by 75%. Mike, thank you so much for joining us and welcome to the site stage. Hey, great to be here. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Yep, we can hear it. We can All right. hear and see you. There you go. Cool. All right. Thank you. Appreciate the time. This is beautiful to be in this coming out of this pandemic and having a talk about activism as the whole uh, Black Lives Matter thing happens too. I think it's an amazing tie-in with um, not only with uh, that cause but also with uh, the psychedelic cause. So I wanted to talk a little bit about activism today. Uh, I recently started something I'm calling the Mind Army, and we're putting up a site at mindarmy.org, but basically the Mind Army is demanding the right and fighting for the right to pursue happiness. Like it says in the Constitution, right there, it says you have the right to pursue happiness. And right now we're living in, obviously, a crisis of suicide, depression, addiction, and people need something to break them through. And to be able to have this ca- these different catalysts that are naturally available growing out of the ground, people just have to have the right to use these. And so what we're doing is we are asking the president, uh, this president, the next president, whoever that is, to do an executive order uh, reversing the order that was done in October of 1966. And that order was done by Richard Nixon. And he said, we're making these psychedelics illegal, but we're doing it because we don't know how safe they are. But he said, I'm going to do an executive order so that if I need to change it down the line or some other president needs to change it, it could easily be changed. And so they obviously now 53 years later, We've realized, you know, millions of people have experienced these things. They're very safe. People have had some very beneficial effects uh, from them. And for that reason, we need the president to 
go in and make an executive order making these catalysts available to people right now when they need it because we had that crisis coming into the COVID-19 and now with the PTSD that people have suffered uh, from that experience, from the experience we're going through right now with you know, this sort of the change of culture, people have a lot of trauma and we have these incredible catalysts that can you know, break somebody through and just you know, change their brain state, change their consciousness. And we are demanding the right right now to be able to use these uh, these catalysts. And so I would ask everybody to join the Mind Army. And some of the uh, things that we intend to do to bring awareness to this, we're trying to reverse this by next Memorial Day. Before that, hopefully a lot sooner. But you know, uh, there was an amendment made where when people were going off to war they felt like it was important that they have the right to vote if they could be sent off to war. Well, we feel like you deserve the right to go inside your own mind uh, if you're going to be able to be sent off to war so you can figure out, you know, how that resonates with you. And, you know, when you come back from that experience to be able to reintegrate back into society in a healthy way. So this is a human right. Um, You know, we all have uh, as humans and as Americans here, you know, we, we've, you know, journeyed and explored the new world and we explored the West, and we explored outer space. And it's kind of insane that you're not allowed to explore inside your own mind. It goes against that human DNA of exploration. So the mind army right now is, you know, absolutely just demanding this right. There's no way you can say, you know, alcohol and tobacco are fine, but, you know, mushrooms and cannabis and ayahuasca, those are off the table. That doesn't make any sense. We have modern science. This is 2020. We all understand that there's a safety, the safety protocols and things that are there. And now we have to be able to study these things. People have to be able to use these, you know, end of life, for example, uh, you know, these psilocybin studies and things that have shown incredible effect when somebody's facing uh, end of life situation. Uh, people deserve this. It's a human right. So uh, we need to do some really strong activism right now, I think, as a community. And uh, I was on a panel at the conference, um, The Future of Psychedelics. And in that conference, the keynote was um, given by Rick Doblin, and they said, hey, when do you think psychedelics will be totally legal in the United States? And he's, his projection was 2035. And I was sitting there, and I, I love Rick, and I love everything they do, but I was just like, wow, I'm not waiting till 2035. No way. I, we're, we won't even be here in 2035 if we have to wait 15 years for this. So we need to, as a community, I think, be a lot more aggressive in how we're doing activism. And I wanted to tell you about some of the things that the Mind Army is going to be doing and why we're doing it um, in general. Um, So the reason that I feel like this is really important is that it feels like we're having an empathy crisis right now. And by that, I mean that, you know, people want to feel for other people and they want to be able to care about other people who live across the world or are their neighbor that they don't know or somebody who's going to live a hundred years from now. They want to care, but we live in this very distracted society and you can care without necessarily having enough empathy to put yourself actually in that person's shoes. And there are catalysts of that, you know, whether it's ketamine or psilocybin or ayahuasca or ibogaine or any other that can, when you go inside of yourself and you come back out, you come back out with more empathy. And the only way I've ever seen people get instantly more empathy is that they either have a near death experience or they have some major breakthrough with a master healing plant. And so the concept is that if we could get enough people, a critical mass of people to go inside their minds and come back out with more empathy, then 
we could basically solve any problem that we have as a society. It would be easy. We could solve violence, eco-destruction. You know, it'd be easy for people to think about, you know, the future and people that live across the globe from them if they had enough empathy. So we need to encourage and motivate as many people in society as possible to go inside their mind and come back out with more empathy. And the really good news is we don't have to have everybody. And I was, when I was making the reality of truth, uh, I met up with Joel Osteen, the televangelist preacher, and he's gave me some amazing advice for the psychedelic community because I was talking to him and I was ranting about psychedelics and he, you know, it wasn't his wheelhouse, but he said, Hey, look, you know, you're going to have to, if you're, if you guys are starting a movement, you're going to have to kind of think the way that I think, which is that, you know, I'm a Christian and there are Christians who don't like me because they say, you know, I'm not, I'm not telling people they're going to go to hell enough or I'm not tough enough. He's like, so he said, I had to realize, and this is what you need to realize in your movement is there's 25% of the people that love you, no matter what you do, they love you. There's 25% of the people who hate you, no matter what you do. You could cure cancer and they're going to say you're putting cancer doctors out of business. He's like, don't worry about either of those groups. He's like, you got 50% of the people right in the middle and you can bring those people over to your side and create the critical mass that you're looking for. And the other 25%, eventually they'll come along by osmosis at some point, but don't even worry about them. And I was like, wow, that's really good advice for the psychedelic community because a lot of times when you say, you know, oh, I want everybody to have this experience. People are like, oh, good luck getting, you know, this conservative person or that to do it. And you realize now you say, I, I don't need those people. You know, I got all these people. And it seems like the people in the middle are people who are, uh, you know, would love to come over to this, this side and this, you know, new consciousness, the expansion of consciousness. So, I think in this empathy crisis that we're having, if we can get that critical mass, it's going to be very easy. And the reason that the mind army, I think, is important to everybody is because this right to go inside your mind and explore yourself and explore the depth is it supersedes all the other rights because you don't know how to think necessarily about different rights and different thoughts and these things if you haven't isolated you know, who you are, what your energy, what your frequency is, uh, it's going to be very difficult for you to make clear decisions unless you are clear within yourself. So this is sort of like the most important right. And that's, again, it's at the beginning of the constitution. They say you have the right to pursue happiness. So we need that. There's a lot, a lot of people who are not happy right now, not experiencing everything as the miracle that it is. So uh, I think, you know, this is just such an an incredible time. Um, And uh, so for me, advocacy in this area means, you know, taking very special opportunities to, you know, create awareness. And I'll give you a couple examples of what the Mind Army's done. Uh, In the past, Um, we took out a full page ad in the New York Times. I penned a letter uh, to President Trump. It was the day after he was inaugurated um, in 2017. And I knew at the time that he was still reading the Washington Post, the New York Times and the New York Post. And so we knew that if we took a full page ad in the New York Times and we dedicated that instead of, you know, of being confrontational, but rather to be educational. Because again, doctors and politicians, they don't know about this. It's not that they're ignoring it and there's a conspiracy. They just literally have never been taught this information. So we put the full page ad in there. We asked the president to make the opiate epidemic a first hundred day issue. And we educated in that article about ketamine ketamine for veterans, the opportunity there, and the fact that ibogaine was an amazing addiction disruptor. And so in doing that, we got uh, an incredible amount of 
very diverse people came through. Uh, a year later, I was talking to Katie Couric at an event, and she had seen the letter and was interested in Ibogaine. And so you just really never know where these different um, activist uh, things that you could do for the psychedelic space, you, you have no idea how they're going to impact and where they're going to impact the right people and that we get to this critical mass. Um, the Mind Army is also publishing and distributing 1 million microdosing handbooks. So the Mind Army's microdosing handbook is going to show people how to microdose all of these different catalysts, what the best protocols and best uh, practices are for microdosing different catalysts. And if they find themselves in a psychedelic neutral place like Denver or Oakland, Berkeley, uh, hopefully the whole country at some point soon, that they have the opportunity to safely and effectively begin by microdosing. And obviously microdosing is a great way to start because you get a small dose, it's subperceptual, you can work your way up. And so the Mind Army is going to give away a million of these handbooks and these microdosing handbooks, we're going to try to give them away in high profile places uh, high profile opportunities, uh, which we see some big ones really coming up around the election, around people, um, you know, talking about this, uh, the political uh, window here and coming out of COVID-19. But absolutely, people, you know, need these catalysts. They deserve these. They have the human right to have them. And I think, you know, our small population of psychedelic advocates and scientists and doctors and, and people who've been in this you know, lifestyle for uh, however long, we are the people carrying the knowledge. So we need to be uh, the people that carry this, this forward right now, carry the message forward. And so uh, this, is, you know, this is a breakthrough time. I, I wanted to tell a quick story. It's, it's, it fits activism a little bit, but Again, any awareness that we can bring to these uh, these opportunities that we're doing is it, it accelerates out what's happening. And so, uh, ketamine is an incredible compound. It's obviously the only legal psychedelic right now. And for that reason, I think it's very important that we uh, put a lot of focus there because ketamine, you know, puts you into that present moment awareness where there's no future and there's no past, you're just in that present moment. And you can live a thousand lifetimes in 30 minutes of a low dose ketamine uh, session safely administered by a doctor. And what's really exciting about the ketamine is that, you know, it, Yale University showed that it can break depression, suicidal ideation, uh, the documentation is there. So people can come in Coming out of this COVID-19, you've got probably 50 million people suffering from some level of PTSD, more people suffering from addiction. And here's ketamine that can break suicidal ideation. It can, you know, reverse the brain state that exists that a lot of people are in right now. Um, and this is a real miracle for us. And I think the fact that people can come in to a Western medicine you know, Western medical doctor's office, get an FDA approved medication and be able to take that in a safe set and setting. And they go in for depression or addiction, but they come out with some level of enlightenment, some level of being in, you know, what you might call God consciousness. And so this is a really exciting kind of, you know, pathway for society to have the realization similar to what they had with cannabis, where a lot of people were trying it for the first time and realized that, hey, you know what, this is really good for me, for my health. And, um, you know, maybe whatever they told me that it was negative in the past, uh, you know, I don't necessarily believe that anymore. And I think that, that that's opened them up to other catalysts, like be it, you know, psilocybin or ketamine, that they say, yeah, you know, maybe there's something here for me because in the past I was afraid of these things. I've been told that negative things about them. 
And uh, maybe like cannabis, these things could, you know, hold the key to me having, you know, happiness and things like that. Um, the one scientific thing I wanted to say about the ketamine that's pretty remarkable is the new science out of China says that you have this area of your brain called the default mode network. And there's a mechanism in there called your lateral habanula. And that lateral habanula is recording all the stress that you've ever had in your whole life. And when it gets to, a, to be too much, it goes into a tipping point and it changes your brain state into this burst mode. And when your brain goes into burst mode, it shuts off all your dopamine production. So you're getting no dopamine, you're getting no happiness, you've got no motivation. The first time you do a ketamine treatment properly, it reverses that brain state and you immediately start getting your dopamine back. So this is, you know, an incredible uh, catalyst. People, again, they think it's synthetic and this and that, you know, ketamine is a crystal. They put together, you know, some salts and some minerals and they grow this new ketamine crystal, which has its own frequency vibration and which Timothy Leary and John Lilly and these people spent decades studying and realized that, you know, this is really how you unlock the supercomputer that you have within your, yourself and in your brain. And um, so this is very miraculous. And I, like I say, this is a crystal. This is a, you know, something you could even put good energy on, on top of all that, but it's got a very clean slate. There's no legacy to it. A lot of times with plant medicine, you know, how it's grown, where it's grown, how it's treated, how it's prepared, these things can, you know, have an effect on your experience where the ketamine is always a very, very clean um, catalyst. And so the fact that we have this here, the fact that it's shown to grow after, after it's taken, when it metabolizes, it grows new neural pathways in the brain around trauma and depression. This is exactly what our society needs. And the fact that ketamine, it's not a hallucinogenic, it's a dissociative. So it's basically dissociating your left and your right brain and allowing them to communicate uh, freely without your ego getting involved. And so this is a, you know, Cleveland Clinic called it a top 10 medical breakthrough. It was the only mental health uh, thing on the list. And so basically ketamine is the biggest breakthrough in mental health that's ever happened for humans. And we are living in this moment where we get to bring this out and it's really, really exciting. Um, as you mentioned at the beginning, we started something called the ketamine fund and the ketamine fund is dedicated to giving veterans free treatments. You know, ultimately we want the ketamine fund to be able to give anybody who's having a suicidal ideation a free ketamine treatment, you know, within 24 hours that they're in a clinic. And we've put together a network of 30 plus clinics around the country that are supporting our efforts. And, you know, like I said, the number one side effect of ketamine is that it breaks suicidal ideation. And the way it does it is that you basically, when you go into that present moment awareness and you are you know, in that experience, usually when somebody's going to kill themselves, they, they figure they only have two things they can do, continue to do what they're doing or kill themselves. That's their only two options. But when you're in the ketamine, it opens up these 10 different option sets that you see. And then you start to realize, oh, you know what? I kind of I like to do that, or I could do this. And that might lead to that, which could lead to this. And you come out of that and you're just, you're not going to kill yourself. You're you're ready to move forward and to explore some of what you were exposed to. And so this is an incredibly exciting time to be alive uh, for this movement. There's never been a better time. Um, and, uh, you know, a big, big thing to support the movement is off also the media. And so uh, my partners and I were finishing, we just finished a movie where, talking to the different distribution networks, but this is our Lamar Odom Reborn movie. And basically, uh, as most people know, Lamar was an NBA champion. He married one of the Kardashians. He's a reality TV star. And he had a very public 
uh, overdose where he overdosed in a brothel and he had went into a coma. He had 12 strokes, six heart attacks, kidney damage, liver failure. And he almost was thought maybe to be a vegetable or never walk again or be normal. And he came out of that and he started to rehab himself but he was in kind of a dark place where he knew he had this addiction profile. Uh, he had a lot of trauma in his life that probably until this movie comes out, people aren't really aware, but Lamar's mother died when he was 12 years old of cancer in front of him. His grandmother who raised him passed away. He had a six month old son who died. So a lot of trauma and, uh, he had never experienced any psychedelics. He'd always been told to stay away from those because if, you know, something happens and you have a bad experience, you could maybe be shot by the police or put in a mental institution for the rest of your life. Um, you know, this is something that we as a psychedelic community need to kind of clean up and make this, you know, create some fairness racially with psychedelics because, you know, everybody deserves to have these experiences in the right set and setting without judgment. And we need to make it so that they can be safe and, you know, nobody uh, has a disadvantage within there. So uh, Lamar, uh, somebody, I was screening my movie and the reality of truth. And somebody came up to me after and said, Hey, um, you know, I'm friends with Lamar Odom. Can you, you know, maybe use some plant medicine on him? I just saw, you know, you talking about that. So I said, yeah, I'd love to, you know, meet him and, and communicate what's what I'm doing. And I wound up convincing him to come in down to Florida to do some ketamine treatments. And he went inside his mind and he, he had an amazing experience. He, you know, he, he was just, you know, got to that settled place and realized that some of the answers he was looking for are inside. So he wound up coming down to Mexico uh, to do an ibogaine um, treatment. And I brought him down there and I said, Lamar, you know, you're an African-American guy. This is an African, -Amer African root. Maybe you've been cut off from it culturally. You're supposed to be interacting with this plant. But given your profile and addiction, I think, you know, this is going to give you a mental and a physical reset. And thankfully, I had done ibogaine myself. Um, as an experience. And I brought a number of people down to Mexico to try that. And so he, he came with us, he let us film all of this. And he had an incredible breakthrough. 48 hours after the Ibogaine experience, he said he felt so good that he wanted to make a comeback in professional basketball. And four months later, he played in a tournament in Dubai professionally. And it was like his rocky moment where he was able to use these catalysts to heal himself mentally and physically. And he continues to do really well and continues to follow up and do some regular ketamine treatments uh, along the way, because again, you're growing new neural pathways in your brain. Uh, you're basically using your entire brain. Why wouldn't somebody want to do that? I mean, you could potentially be wasting your whole life if you don't tap into some of these catalysts. So in, in closing, I want to say on the more commercial side, um, with my partner Warren Gumpel, we've started something called Keta MD, kind of like WebMD, but Keta MD. And we're giving uh, ketamine treatments and we're doing it virtually. So you use our doctor network, have a call with them, they order you the prescription of the ketamine. We mail you a lozenger that melts in your mouth. You absorb about 30% of the ketamine that's in the lozenger. So we calculate the proper, the doctor calculates proper dose, sends that to you. And then over telemedicine, we guide you, our advocates guide you to have the best experience possible and to guide you in your um, experience and in the integration. And so, you know, this has been made available really by necessity of COVID. And I think coming out of it, people aren't going to necessarily want to go to a doctor's office, especially if they're depressed or scared. They're going to want it from the comfort of their own home, uh, be able to have this experience. And uh, it is a very significant experience when you uh, get the right dose of ketamine and you disassociate. Uh, you know, that could be, you know, a thousand lifetimes. And you know, it's just important to be guided by somebody who's 
had the ketamine experience. It's not, you don't want, you know, some psychotherapist who's never done it before. You don't want somebody even that, you know, maybe they're experts in psilocybin and ayahuasca and all these plant medicines. If they haven't had the ketamine experience, they really can't put the right context on what's happening. And so we want to, um, you know, basically bring down any, you know, point of resistance, which is leaving your home, having a needle or an IV or something like that. Uh, Keta MD to be able to do this all virtually, it's, it's kind of a miracle. And uh, we hope it's the gateway for people because we've noticed that whenever somebody has their ketamine experience, then they're wide open to plant medicine, to meditation, breathing, all of these different things, you know, that we integrated with Lamar as well. So um, that's, that's what I would say about advocacy, but we got to get really aggressive right now. Please join the Mind Army. We're going to have the mindarmy.org site up shortly and opportunities where we're going to be doing uh, pop-up events and screenings and things like that. But, you know, like I say, we have to, we can't wait till 2035. We, this, I don't even think the human race will be here if we had to wait for 2035, but nature's very intelligent. It's brought out cannabis. It's eased out these um, plants and now's the time. So I'm really excited. And uh, I don't know if there's any questions, but uh, that's, yeah. we got a great moment here. Thank you so much, Sappy. We really appreciate it. Um, I just have one quick question. Uh, so, you know, legalization 2035, something that a lot of folks have been talking about, um, you know, when, uh, what's the date that we're going to see you designing a, uh, course for Harvard business school on psychedelics? You know, I, I think it's, it's coming soon. I think as soon as, I think the executive order is really important rather than doing all of these, you know, localized, uh, you know, different trying to change legislation and things. I mean, this was made with an executive order. It can be reversed with an executive order. And then I think as soon as it's legal, then we can actually study these things and figure out what the pro proper dosing, you know, like, you know, a couple thousand people a year die of a peanut allergy. We don't outlaw peanuts. We just, you know, come up with testing and ways to secure uh, people having the right experience. And I think if we can do psychedelics that way, and people can get these catalysts in a positive way, because even right now with marijuana and things, people don't really get the full benefit that they could because somewhere in the back of their mind, there's, there's somebody out there going, this isn't good. It's drugs and blah, blah, blah. And so you're not even getting the medicinal value that you could be getting. And I think mm -hmm. if we could, you know, reverse this right now, start studying these things, make them ultra safe, and figure out, you know, because again, microdosing psilocybin could probably eliminate all of the antidepressant drugs that are out there and create a very coherent society where everybody is joyful and, you know, they have peace and happiness for their family, which I think is the only thing that people really want. We're all the same. We just want peace and we want happiness for our family. And if this can be the path through, um, then it's a thank God we're at this moment where we can embrace it. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a beautiful note to end on. Thank you so much, Sappy, for joining us. Really you appreciate too. it. And we'll you be too. in touch Peace. soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right. Introducing our next speaker, we have Kyle Buller. He's the co-founder of Psychedelic.